You ready, Margaret? You ready? Good afternoon. Thank you all for attending. This is the August 1st, 2023 edition of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. I do detect a quorum. We will begin with public comment period. And I do believe we have one speaker on the agenda for public comment at Transportation and Infrastructure. Is Morgan Hartgrove here? Hello, how are you? Thank you for attending. Um, just want to make sure we understand um, public comment. You are allowed to speak for two minutes on an agenda item and uh, please state your name and your address and the topic and then uh, you go right ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. My name is Morgan Hartgrove and I'm with the law firm Thompson Burton located at 1801 Weston Avenue, 37203. I'm speaking today on behalf of my client, Old Town Trolley Tours of Nashville. And I've got Steve Burris, the general manager of Old Town Trolley with me here today. We're here because we support um, 1869, the bill is amended and the substitute, which protects existing sightseeing tours from the proposed permit reduction. Thank you to Director Alarcon and the NDOT staff for your work to reduce traffic congestion. We agree that curbing noise and disruptive behavior is an important priority for the city and we support regulation in those areas. NDOT is asking council to reduce permits for all entertainment transportation vehicles, including sightseeing vehicles. Their support for this request comes from a simulation showing that vehicles below 15 miles an hour create congestion. The simulation includes assumptions that don't apply to sightseeing vehicles like us. Specifically, the vehicles in the simulation go a maximum of 15 miles an hour while we travel at the speed of traffic. So it's appropriate to remove sightseeing vehicles from this request because NDOT's data doesn't support the contention that sightseeing vehicles are part of the problem. In fact, we reduce the effects of traffic and travel at the speed of traffic. A filled 40 person bus takes as many as 20 passenger vehicles off the road. Sightseeing trolleys provide a valuable service to the city beyond any incidental traffic they may cause. We also provide public transit services. As our slogan states, we are the attractions that take people to the attractions. And we have only three approved stops downtown. We cater to families and we tell Nashville's history. We don't contribute to the other problems associated with entertainment transportation. On our tours, there are no outward facing spe speakers, alcohol is not allowed on board, and disruptive behavior is not tolerated. So today, we ask that council support the bill as amended. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hartgrove, appreciate that. Um, all right, we will now move to our consent agenda. I will call these out by number and then I'll go back and read the captions. If you want anything pulled, let me know. After I read the captions, you'll still have an op another opportunity to do that. Um, so we got Bill on public he hearing, BL 2023-2021, Robert Sponsor, resolutions, RS 2023-2345, um, then we have bills on second reading, BL 2123 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20
Um, and then um, I apologize. Uh, I would um, like, please, to pull. Um, Twenty-three forty-five and uh, twenty-three forty-six, please. Okay. All right, they are pulled. Thank you for that. All right, any more? I'll begin reading the captions. RS 2023-2348, Gamble and other sponsors, authorize the director of public property to exercise an option agreement for the purchase of a flood prone property located at 3432 Brick Church Pike for Metro Water Services. RS 2023-2349, wrote and other sponsors, approves amendment one to a contract between Metropolitan Government and Waste Pro of Tennessee for the provision of solid waste collection and collection of carts. Let's see, BL 2023-2030, Bradford and other sponsors, authorize the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public water main and to accept new public water main and the replacement of existing fire hunter assemblies for property located at one terminal drive, also known as terminal drive water main project, uh, Metro water project number 23-WL-31 and 2023-M-091ES-001. RS 2023-2111 uh, wrote and other sponsors authorizes the granting of a temporary overhead line easement and a per permanent underground utility easement for the electric power board on certain property owned by the Metropolitan Government. BL 2023-2112 wrote and other sponsors approves a greenway conservation easement and a participation agreement between the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation and 301 Bill Ben Allen LP for greenway improvements. BL 2023-2113 Syracuse and other sponsors amends the geographic information system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government by renaming JB Estill Drive between Lebanon Pike and Old Lebanon Pike to Donaldson Station Boulevard. BL 2023-2115 Cash and other sponsors approves the conditional abandonment of the public right-of-way of Jess Neely Drive between Nash's Trace and 25th Avenue South. BL 2023-2116 wrote and other sponsors authorizes the abandonment of an easement and the acquisition of another easement on the same parcel of property bounded by Hermitage Avenue, 1st Avenue South, and Peabody Street. BL 2023-2117 wrote and other sponsors approves a contract between the Met Metropolitan Government and Ned Drone Associates Incorporated to provide flight and board your products, parts, and services. BL 2023-2118, Withers and other sponsors, authorize the Metropolitan Government to abandon easement rights located at 519 Elgin Street. BL 2023-2119, Parker and other sponsors, authorizes the Metropolitan Government to accept a new public water main, horizontal relocation of a public water main, and a doghouse sanitary sewer manhole for four properties located at 1505, 1509, 1511, and 1513 Dickerson Pike. BL 2023-2120, Withers and other sponsors, authorize the Metropolitan Government to accept new public sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for three properties located at 1121 and 1127 Waller Road, and 3112 Cottus Court in Williamson County. BL 2023-2121, Swope and other sponsors, authorizes the Metropolitan Government to accept new public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for two properties located at Old Hercule Boulevard unnumbered and Windy Pine Drive unnumbered. BL 2023-2122, Withers and other sponsors, authorizes the Metropolitan Government to abandon an existing sanitary sewer force main and easements and to accept a new public sanitary sewer force main and easements for six properties located at Victory Avenue South, First Street, Shelby Avenue, Titans Way, Russell Street, and Woodland Street, also known as Browns Creek Force Main Sewer Relocation Project, Metropolitan Water, Pro Water Services Project Number 23-SL-54, and Proposal Number 2023-M-088-ES-001. BL 2023-2123, Withers and other sponsors, authorizes the Metropolitan Government to abandon an existing public water main and to accept a new public water main and fire hydrant assemblies for six properties located on Severe Street. Anything need to come off of that? 
Seeing none, all in favor of the consent agenda? None. Any opposed? Consent agenda passes. I don't see Council Member Roberts here. I saw her in the house. Is she, I'm assuming she's at another committee, but uh, we don't, uh, I guess we can't move forward. So I'll kick this uh, bill in public hearing to the heel and see if we can get her back in here. So we'll move to RS-2023. Dash 2345 Sledge and other sponsors approves a proposal of the T dot to N dot for N dot to agree to maintain signal and sidewalk upgrades in connection with T dot's pedestrian road safety construction initiative on stat State Route 106 from Pierce Avenue to 19th Avenue South. Uh, we do have a letter to approve from Councilmember Sledge. Councilmember Henderson, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I I am in support of this, but I did pull it from consent just to ask a few context questions because. We, uh, excuse me, I didn't mean yes. to interrupt. Can we uh, go ahead and get a motion to get the bill on the floor? Moved and probably seconded, uh, Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I know in this committee, we have discussed a lot over the years what it might look like uh, to have NDOT and TDOT partnering together or not on various aspects of things, you know, roadway cleanup, gravel, mowing. Um, uh, Councilman Nash and uh, Councilman Young uh, elevated that issue in some particular spots around the city. And in our committee, we did ask, rather than just sort of, you know, spot partnership, spot partnership, spot partnership, that we would have kind of the bigger conversation of kind of what are we doing on our state routes um, at any particular intersection? Um, you know, varying context, you know, uh, concrete traffic islands, uh, uh, mowing, um, signal maintenance, all that kind of stuff. And so I'm just hoping um, in the context for this particular uh, item, again, to which I am not opposed, if NDOT could please update us on that broader conversation of just kind of systemically how we're going to address all this, because we elevated it by way of resolution, I believe, colleagues, and then um, by my notes, we never got the answer to that. And so that's what I'm often concerned about is just how we're holding these through lines um, that, you know, people elevate stuff in committee, and then, you know, we have a lot of leadership change, and so I would just appreciate an update update on that, please, Chair. Director Freeze. Yeah. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. So, Councilman Harrison, that's a great question. So, matter of fact, we had a meeting on Friday with, uh, with TDOT actually talking about the MOU between us and TDOT specifically in terms of the maintenance of uh, bikeways, for example, the maintenance responsibilities. Uh, we have a form, we already have an agreement. We sign agreements actually per project for the maintenance of signals in there, actually before the project is let to construction, TDOT uh, does this with all the local agencies because TDOT does not own or operate any traffic signals currently. So they require uh, an agreement be, be signed for us to take over and maintain that signal prior to. But as far as your question moving forward, holistically, we are working with TDOT to update our maintenance agreement when it comes to responsibilities. That include uh, bikeway, uh, also includes uh, litter uh, pickup as well. Uh, and as far as at times we do go out there and pick up things on state routes, uh, d depending on uh, urgency and, and when things are going on. So we are having that conversation about how we would be reimbursed uh, for that. So I will say this, we went away with that meeting with a positive feeling that they were, they're in a good position to have that conversation right now. And we are looking forward to having a formal workshop where we sit down uh, with some of the staff level uh, members and draw all those lines that you're talking about uh, specifically. Um, thank you, uh, Chair and Mr. Fries. And could you speak then, um, that's great, I appreciate the update, um, sidewalks in particular. So I know this is an intersection project and often those have associated sidewalks. And so we talked about uh, bikeways and the maintenance and the signalization, but can you speak to the sidewalk piece specifically? So we do maintain sidewalks on state routes, anything behind. So the state law is curb to curb. Uh, so face of curve to face of curve is where our maintenance response, the state's ends and ours picks, picks up. So we do maintain sidewalks on state routes. And okay, I appreciate that. I did, I was up um, in Bordeaux and looking at, I guess, the Clarksville Pike. Yeah. Um, 
massive uh, project up there that I know, I feel like we were talking about in this committee all like years and years and years ago. But the concern at the time was that um, it was sort of old TDOT standard, right, of, um, uh, you know, not having a furnishing zone, not having opportunity. And so I think, can you then also share where we are on master planning our corridors? Because yeah. I have seen in my own district when we have a TDOT project, and we ask them and they kindly upgrade to our major and collector street plan standard and perhaps do a furnishing zone. Mm -hmm. um, and then that creates a maintenance issue, right? Um, and so it's like we wanna build the sidewalks better, but it doesn't seem like we've kind of worked out who and how we're gonna maintain. And as we consider um, it continuing to expand our street tree requirements and so forth. So is the conversation that you are having with TDOT about kind of connecting all these dots, that will also include uh, the sidewalk, street tree, uh, that aspect of that things? That is correct. Okay. Yes, that responsibility for maintenance of all those facilities. Uh, so I will, I'll, you did, so when we do uh, have a sidewalk project that the state is funding and it's their project, they do look at our major collector street plan uh, currently and can correspond to that. You know, uh, as uh, as I believe Dr. Alakon has mentioned before, we're going through uh, starting a planning process to actually update our major collector street plan. So that, that will be, TDOT will actually be a part of that as well. So uh, I would right. imagine there'll be enhancements made uh, of that in the future as well. Excellent, I appreciate the update. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, any other questions relative to this bill? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? All right, we recommend approval. RS 2023-2346, Roten and other sponsors, approves an application for safe streets and roads and for all grant from TDOT to NDOT for improvements along Nolensville Pike to address safety issues relative to substandard and or missing walking, bicycling, and transit facilities and the need for pedestrian lighting and the lack of pedestrian crossing locations. Do I have a motion? Moved and probably seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Councilmember Henderson. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question was about the extent of this project. Like, what are the um, the the cross streets or the the range? Is it in a defined area or is it for the full corridor within the county? Uh, Councilmember Henderson, we the so it's a two point mile. Total length project is between Nolensville, between Nolensville uh, Transit along, wait, let me see. It's between McCall Street and Haywood Lane, a 2.5 mile section. And that's with on our in higher injury network. So the project includes both lighting, uh, pedestrian enhancements, uh, signal enhancements, but they're all aimed at the uh, more of the rapid deployable systems that we can get out there and do and, and do as far as our Vision Zero efforts. <laughs> Um, okay, and are these federal pass-through dollars? I guess, you know, I, I think okay. when we've had another kind of fatality and everything, um, and this is top of mind for folks, I just, yeah. I, I, these projects are great. I'm so very glad we're doing them. But I think, you know, what I hear from citizens is it feels very piecemeal, right? So we're doing this two-mile segment, and then we're doing this thing, and this was the high injury network, and we're doing this over there and there. Mm -hmm. And folks want to know, like, kind of how are we master planning the corridors? How are they, yes. like, doing this at scale? So can you talk about how this will then be perhaps applied to the larger corridor and to our other corridors? Yes, I can. So specifically, uh, um, we are moving forward already with, with, uh, with high, along our high injury network along the Olmstel Pike. This is a way to make our make our money go a little bit further, you know, and leverage that opportunity. We actually submitted uh, during the last call for the Safe Streets for All grant for Nolan So Pike as well. We were not awarded at that time, however, encouraged to, we actually got a call specifically from the FHWA. We're encouraged to resubmit this next time. Uh, so we are, are feeling pretty positive about our chances. Uh, so it, it's not, it does not prevent us from moving forward if we're not win, winning this grant. We are still moving forward with projects along Nolensville Pike. We already have funding in place to do so. It's just helping us leverage it to, you know, to go a little bit further. Excellent. I always appreciate that context. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilor Henderson. Any other comments on this bill? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? 
and we recommend approval. RS 2023-2347, O'Connell and other sponsors approves a participation agreement between the Department of Water and Sewage Services and Clark UMC Community Development Corporation to provide public water service improvements for Clark UMC's proposed development as well as other existing properties in the area. Uh, do I have a motion? Moved and properly seconded. I believe this was deferred uh, one meeting in budget. Council Member O'Connell. I think I double man, double hit this thing, so go ahead. Look, third time's a charm. <laughs> uh, not sure what happened in budget and finance, but um, if we need to defer, we can move for a one minute deferral here. I think uh, it's automatic, isn't it? Uh, Probably coming so. out of uh, bu budget. Yeah, we can so. just, we'll defer by rule on the floor and that'll be fine. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, Councilman Allen. Thank you, just by way of explanation. I had just asked the question and no one able, was able to answer it, so I'd ask for the deferral. Um, but just with regard to the relationship between participation agreements and community development corporations that may be building affordable housing, and you, you may you may know what this project entails and if there's if there's a way that we could, if you know, if we are providing help here or if we are adding a burden here, that's what I was trying to get more information on. So if the council member knows. Do you want to address that, Councilman McConnell, or we'll just move to the next meeting? Uh, well, I, yeah, I guess we can address it in between if it's deferred by rule. Okay. Well, it won't be okay. deferred. We, we've got to make a committee rep recommendation here. It is. The, okay. So we don't need to. I'll chat. I'll chat offline. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, we'll move on. Thank you so much. Um, now we'll move to bills on second reading, BL 2023-1869, Pulley and other sponsors, amends Title VI, Chapter 77, Arc 1 of the Metropolitan Go Code regarding renewal of entertainment transportation certificates of public necessity and convenience and entertainment transportation vehicle permits. Do I have a motion? Moved to have a second. All right, moved to properly seconded. I will give an explanation on, uh, we've, we've got two proposed amendments and a proposed substitute. Uh, we've robustly discussed this. We've engaged, uh, we've had several special called meetings for stakeholders to be able to weigh in on this. So my amendments and substitutes came out of that. Uh, the first amendment number one, I would like to move that amendment uh, with a brief explanation. So moved and probably seconded. The amendment number one, it simply brings it back to the council uh, because in the bill, uh, the TLC and NDOT being a part of that would come up with uh, basically the rules and which would include the number of entertainment vehicles uh, which would be uh, restricted regarding the permits. And so this amendment, uh, once that process is completed and those rules are established and the number is uh, set, it brings it back to the council to approve a resolution. So we at least get an opportunity to see uh, what they put together, uh, what the number is and we get an opportunity to pass a resolution with that information on it. So that's the explanation of amendment. And uh, uh, I open the floor for discussion. Councilman McConnell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will say in the past when we've done work with the Transportation Licensing Commission, it has been our preference to actually reduce council's interactivity with that. I mean, that's to me, that's kind of the point of the commission. So I'm, I'm having a hard time with the justification for the amendment. Sure. Um, any other discussion? Governor Henderson. Uh, I, I think my question concern is kind of similar to Councilman O'Connell's. I would say, you know, as our representative on the Traffic and Parking Commission, Ms. Darby and I have talked several times about just kind of all the sort of disjointed pathways of how we get legislation. Like, does it start on the NDOT side of the house? Does it start over at council? Does it start in the commission? Does it come back to us? Um, and so I would, um, uh, I, I am open to uh, supporting this, but I guess I would just want to kind of be on the record that we get somewhat consistent in how we do this work in partnership with our commissions that intersect with this committee and NDOT and the various associated commissions. I just feel like we have very disjointed pathways for how we do this. Um, so I'm not saying that we don't need the additional resolution, 
Um, but if we're going to do that, then are we going to do that for everything or, right? I just feel like um, respectfully, we need to kind of bring some clarity to that. So again, Chair, that doesn't mean I oppose this one, but I just wanted to be on the record that, um, you know, with the department here um, and my service on a, another related commission uh, that we need to work on that, please. I understand. Thank you so much. Any other discussion? Okay, we'll take a vote on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment, raise your hands. We have one, two, three, four. Any opposed? We have four in favor, two against. Is that the number you have? And one abstention. So the amendment passes, and I do, what I would, prefer to do is not offer the next two amendment and the amendment and the substitute and the purpose for that would be um, there are some legal issues that we're still working through on these so it would be my preference you know uh, the amendment uh, amendment number two uh, and the proposed substitute I can certainly let legal discuss these but um, what I would like to do is pass the bill as currently amended on second reading and continue to work through uh, the amendment and the substitute to come up with something that reasonably works uh, and that doesn't have the current uh, legal issues uh, uh, and we could do that on third reading if if you guys would so entertain that. So uh, anybody got any discussion you want? Zach, uh, Councilman Young, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I know that there has been a lot of work put into this from all the different stakeholders in it. Um, and even on the industry side, there are differing views of, mm -hmm. of what the correct path forward is. I, I still don't know I think we're very close to having something that can really uh, do what we want to do, but also give NDOT. I mean, I think we're very close. I just don't think we're there yet. And I, I'm curious what the thoughts are on um, deferring this for the for the, until after the new term. Uh, from the standpoint that I think, you know, when we look, talk about sightseeing uh, operators, I think we need to put in some some more strict definitions of what exactly constitutes a sightseeing bus, um, because there are some that are true sightseeing operators, and there are some that are claiming that status, and then, you know, making stops at Frugal McDougal and letting people on their bus, um, but still claiming to be a sight seeing operator, um, but I also want to make sure that we are giving TLC and NDOT the, the teeth, so to speak, to enforce things and pull permits for the bad apples, if you will. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant for us to, to, to pass something knowing we need to come back and fix it because that's kind of been a trend with party buses it seems the last one or two years. I mean, part of the reason we're here is because a bill was not properly vetted when it was originally filed a year and a half ago, and you had um, good people get lumped in with, with not so great operators. And I would hate for us to just pass something that, oh, this is mostly good and we need to do something, when I think we're very close to, you know, uh, whoever is back at this council next month, or. I guess October, since we won't meet in September. I, I do think that those smaller details can get worked out between now and then. And I, 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 I know there's been a lot of work put into it and I'm really hesitant to go down this route and asking about thoughts on deferral, but I just, I think we're pretty close, but just not quite there yet. I'm curious what thoughts are. Do you want, um, do you want administration to weigh in on that or? Uh, well, I mean, I, you know, you as the sponsor and the work you sure. put into it, because I, I certainly don't want to go against your your will. Um, but, you know, I think there's several of us that have been trying to work through this over the last sure. couple of years. And, um, you know, it's not it's not an easy issue. And I, and I get that. 
No, I, and I can comment on that, at least from my perspective, is you're exactly right in everything you say, that we have worked hard to try to hear what everybody uh, has to say about this, try to note everything that's important to stakeholders on either side of this issue. Uh, I think the one concern that I've heard in discussing this with people about potentially moving it to another council is uh, realistically, um, you know, we won't take this issue up and you know, you know council seated in october you know by the time we realistically get to this is probably going to be first of the year and uh, the busy season for these etvs is upon us so if we want to do anything to impact the way uh, uh they're being currently regulated now uh it you know, we're not going to be able to do that until the next busy season if we punt this. So that's one concern about it. But I do hear what you're saying as well. We want to do it the right way. So uh, that's where I remain conflicted, just like you do. I guess if I could, Mr. Chair, could we uh, get the input of, of NDOT on what they sure. think that yes. delay would cause? Because I know they really have been stepping enforcement sure. up a lot. Exactly. Um, Mr. Purvis, the floor is yours. So ultimately, as far as timing goes, we uh, we have a hard deadline, I would say, in the spring, April-ish, because that's when our, uh, our current permits are starting to hit renewal time. Uh, and that's really when we're gonna need the power to do this. Um, but if it is, as the chair says, and it, it, the council wouldn't get around to it towards the beginning of the year, and who knows what could happen at that point, I, I, it would be our position to, to pass this now. Okay. Do um, you have anything else you want to add, Councilman Young? I I am going to move to indefinitely defer. You're going to move to indefinitely defer? Okay. Yes, sir. There's a motion on the floor. Do I hear a second? Yes. Um, motion properly seconded to indefinitely defer. Uh, comments on the indefinite deferral motion, Councilman Allen. Thank you. I would just I would just throw in a few more thoughts, which is you know we have been faced with disruptive technology and things that we never knew existed repeatedly on this council, and we don't you know it would be a miracle if we got it right on the first piece of legislation. But I think we've done a good job of of thoughtfully putting something together, and then looking at the data and what we learn from it, and then we come back six months later and make an adjustment. And and I feel like a lot of thought has gone into this uh, this step. Uh, and I don't think we're done, and and then, and I think that's okay. Um, and so I would I would say the the ability to give in dot t um, while the next council gets up to speed and learns because we've learned a lot, uh, and there are going to be over 20 people coming onto this council according to my count um, that haven't been thinking about this, and and it's I think it's going to take them a little bit of time um, to at least have as much familiarity with with it as we do. Now, so I would, I would, um, I would acknowledge that we probably will have more work to do on it, but that this is a good intermediate step, and I would prefer to see us go ahead and take this step, knowing that there will be there will be more in the future, and that's just part of the process. Thank you, Councilman Rowan. Uh, Councilmember Cash on the indefinite deferral motion. Uh, yes, it will. Uh, the answer to it, I think, will help me decide whether I'm for an indefinite deferral or not. You said you uh, before you. Before we started talking about it, you said something about legal issues, and I kind of have a sense of what those legal issues are, but could you go into a little more detail, or, or staff go into a little more detail about what that, what those legal questions are, and that will help me understand if it's something we can work out in two weeks. Uh, I know one of the issues is uh, pulling, um, there's, there's a legal opinion pulling uh, um, the, trolleys or what do you call them? The sightseeing vehicles out of this is arbitrary and capricious, but I'm not gonna be a lawyer. I'm gonna turn it over to my attorney and let her explain it to me. Uh, are you? <laughs> that was arbitrary. Uh, no, the chair is accurate that um, there is a question about whether pulling out or and defining sightseeing vehicles would be arbitrary and capricious because um, there, if I'm not mistaken, there's a traffic study that indicates that they both, uh, the, a sightseeing vehicle and an entertainment transportation vehicle um, impede the flow of traffic to the same degree. 
So that's my understanding, and I also understand that it, this really subjects us to, to some litigation if we were to move forward with the amendment and or the substitute that deals with this issue. So that's what the legal issues are to my understanding. And Council Member Young in his comments kind of said, or maybe he said it to me, but something about like if we are better able to, if we were able to come up with better definitions that might uh, about what sightseeing and what's a bit more of an entertainment vehicle that might uh, uh, alleviate some of this legal confusion or, or? Well, here's what I would say to that is uh, there are discussions ensuing right now on how we can get through this uh, between now and the next meeting. So I know that it would, uh, it would require a suspension of the rules to be able to amend this or substitute it on third reading, but uh, making good faith efforts to put something together that does address the concerns that were articulated by stakeholders, yet uh, satisfies any legal issues that we are confronting with uh, the current amendments and the substitute. Uh, those discussions are ongoing, so uh, that would be my desire to be able to have those things buttoned up by the next meeting or do just that, move it on down to the next council. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Nash. Yeah, I would like to speak against the deferral. Uh, you and others have done a lot of work on this. And I think you deserve the chance to have it passed tonight, have a couple of weeks to work on it some more. We don't get what we need by third reading, we can kill it then. Thank you, Councilmember Nash. Any other discussion on the indefinite deferral motion? Seeing none, all in favor of indefinite deferral, raise your hands. Two in favor, all opposed, raise your hands. I'm in opposition. So the indefinite deferral motion fails. Now we're on the bill as amended, and I would renew my uh, call to uh, pass the bill as currently amended to see what we can do between now and then to make other adjustments to the bill by third reading. Councilmember Nash? So moved. Okay. Any other discussion on the bill as amended? All in favor? Raise your hands. Any opposed? Seeing none, uh, we recommend approval of the bill as amended. One opposition. We did have one in opposition? Okay, all right. Okay, we've disposed of that. Now uh, we move to BL 2023-1993 as amended. Allen Sponsor amends Chapter 10.20 Waste Management and Title 16 Building and Constructions of the Metropolitan Code to add the requirement that construction and demolition materials be diverted from landfills. Uh, have a motion? Okay. All right, moved and probably seconded. Uh, Council Member Allen, I believe we have an amendment. I have one for either you or O'Connell. Uh, yes, I would like to move the amendment and then come back and talk okay. talk some more after that. The amendment is, is uh, some technical language again to assure one of you. Um, that there are no issues with the, um, the permitting process in terms of, of um, having this become yet one more thing that becomes a major obstacle in uh, construction projects. So it's um, it's fairly innocuous. I would move the amendment and then have further discussion. Do we have a motion? Do we, need a, do we have a second for the amendment? Do we have a second for the amendment? Okay. Thank you. Moves probably seconded. Uh, any discussion on the amendment? Are all in favor? Any opposed? All right, the amendment passes. Now we're on the bill as amended. Okay. Now, uh, thank you. So this bill, as amended, um, is part of our zero waste master plan. It deals with construction and demolition waste, which is uh, a big part of our waste stream uh, and is trying to create a process by which we no longer just kick the can down the road and figure we'll just send this to other counties and let that be their, their problem. Uh, that is a good, a good thing. It sets up a timetable beginning in January of 2024 uh, to begin to pull certain things out of construction and demolition waste like cardboard and, and steel and concrete. The next year other things get added and the next year other things get added. Same thing at construction sites and demolition sites. Um, that part I think everybody is absolutely supportive from. I have had, uh, and there's a, a packet on your desk that explains what this bill does with regard to the recycling part. And I, I encourage everybody, I know we've got a lot of stuff to read, but I encourage everybody to read through that because I think that's important to understand. Um, 
This has become entwined with uh, specific communities who currently have facilities that deal with construction and demolition waste. My strong feeling is that what this bill does is creates a mechanism whereby there become more opportunities and other places where that construction and demolition waste can go. And I think that that's a benefit to everyone. It also allows for the, for the possibility for the uh, separation to happen on site so that it never goes to any of these facilities. I believe this is a very good bill, um, but I am, have been made aware that there are some communities that feel like this would have an impact on them and that there's a lot more communication that needs to happen to ensure um, that they fully understand what this bill does and doesn't do and how um, the facility that's in their area um, has different, different um, issues that need to be dealt with and discussed separately. And I think there's some council members that would be joining in this discussion if they were not in other committee meetings. Um, so with that, I think what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna move it here, expecting some robust discussion on the council floor um, when there are council members here that are missing right now. So you want a motion to approve? Motion to approve at this the point. Business. Again, I'm encouraging everybody to read all the material that's on your desk because there's um, there's just important information that's that's being confused with other things and I want to make sure everyone understands that. Moved and properly seconded. Any discussion on the bills amended? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, we recommend approval. Uh, next, BL 2023-2106, Syracuse and other sponsors, amends the Metropolitan Code sections 9.20.010 to clarify that all types of amplified music, including live music, must be limited to certain decibels to ensure adequate public health and safety. Um, we have a motion. Hello. Moved and properly seconded. Councilmember Syracuse, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Did we just move the substitute? No, we just moved the bill okay. and I'll leave it to, oh, we, I somebody besides you needs to move the substitute, I guess. And do we have, you wanna move the substitute? All right, we do have a substitute. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? The second, the substitute has been moved and properly seconded. Councilmember Syracuse. Thank you, Chair. So the substitute actually changes a bit about what the title of this le legislation does. I agree to take this on as chair of public health and safety and I told all the Broadway business owners, musicians, hospitality workers that I would work to try to bring general consensus here and that if we couldn't get there, I would kill this, but at least we would start a good conversation. Well, I'm pleased to report that this substitute reflects this general consensus that we did meet. And I had a very great meeting with the Broadway business owners discussions with musicians, the musicians union. Um, and so this substitute reflects those changes. It pairs it down specifically to just interior speakers, the loud ones that are usually around musicians, about 10 feet back from the open windows and doors. Um, and, and that just level sets that issue. It then creates a advisory committee so that the director of the mayor's office of nightlife will put together to start diving into some of these specifics uh, that were taken out of the original bill so that we can have a more robust discussion before we start to regulate those. Uh, it also then also uh, is, uh, gives codes and NDOT some more authority to assist PD. And then an MOU is coming to spell out uh, that relationship between PD codes and, and NDOT. So I'm pleased to report that this substitute reflects uh, widespread uh, support and a request to your approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Syracuse. Any discussion on the substitute? Councilmember Young. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm looking at this and, and I think I could probably get an answer faster from, from the sponsor maybe. Um, the codes department is part of this, but are we are we giving what exactly power or authority are we giving them? Because I believe in the original bill, you know, it was regarding the noise ordinance and codes cannot enforce the noise ordinance. So if you could explain as I'm trying to look at this, what exactly we're, what are we giving codes the authority to do? Councilmember Syracuse, you want to address that? Thank you, Chair. So this does give codes now the ability to go to a business and, uh, and, and cite them if need be. The MOU is what ties all three uh, departments together so that they understand when a particular department would be the one to go out there. Obviously, PD wouldn't ask codes to be going out to, uh, you know, some, something that may not be a totally safe situation. So that, that's what the MOU uh, will, will address. Perfect, thank you. 
Thank you, Council Member Young. Any other discussion? Council Member Swope, let me find you. There you are. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I will say that in, in government ops, we had a robust conversation about the decibel levels <laughs> and, and other sundry aspects of the substitute. Um, while I was originally against this bill, um, I can say right now, I, I, I'm not going to jump up and down and shout hooray for it, but I'm not against it anymore. And I did vote in favor of it in government ops and would ask the rest of you to do the same here. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member Swope. Any other discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, all in favor? Yep. Aye. Any opposed? Substitute passes. Now we're on the bill as substituted. Any discussion on the bill as substituted? Seeing none, all in favor of the bill as substituted? Yep. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, we recommend approval. BL 2023-2114 Withers sponsor amends the GIS street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government by renaming naming Forest with two R's Avenue between Main Street and North 17th Street between North 17th Street to Terminus to Forest with one R Avenue. Um, do I have a motion? Maybe. Moving probably seconded, Council Member Withers. Uh, thank you, Chair Pulley. Uh, this is a street renaming request that was brought to me by multiple property owners on the street. It's actually been a little bit of a recurring topic of conversation uh, as I understand it uh, back all the way when um, my predecessor, Jeff Ackerman, was the District Sex Council member. I think Mr. Jameson heard it a few times. It's been a, a recurring topic of conversation a little bit. It, it is my hope that we can finally um, conclude that discussion and move on to other topics with the next council member. But uh, so um, for this, um, the uh, as is required, the historical commission conducted research uh, and I don't want to read the entire report, but I will say that um, the historical record as far as historical commission staff has been able to determine does not explicitly um, state why the um, spelling of the street originally plotted as forest with one R was subsequently changed to it with two. Um, there is no evidence that it was ever even, certainly was not named or was renamed after any person. Um, so that is not part of the record. Um, additionally, the historical record contains both spellings seemingly interchangeably and sometimes within the same source. So this has been a confusing matter for a, a really long time uh, uh, that we uh, can resolve uh, here in a couple of weeks. But the, um, the historical research shows that the original spelling of the street, at least in the version of Forest, was Forest with one R. There is a little bit of a offset uh, portion that goes behind what is today Lachlan School that originally had a completely different name, which was Morrow, and it was uh, renamed uh, as well uh, a little bit later on. But but what this does, uh, I know there are uh, strong feelings that surround a particular person that may have a last name that has that spelling. Uh, I definitely understand that. Just really want to emphasize to colleagues that there is no evidence that the street was ever named after any person. Um, uh, and so what this effort does is returns the street name to its original spelling as it was platted in 1887. Um, and with that, uh, I hope that um, the, the body will um, follow the will of the overwhelming majority of property owners on the street who did write to the Planning Commission. We do have some that like it the way it is, but the overwhelming number of property owners who participated in the public discussion of the Planning Commission were in favor of this change. Uh, and I want to uh, honor their wishes and hope that the council will do the same. Thank you, Council Member Withers. Any questions regarding this resolution or bill? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? We recommend approval. Now we'll go back to the beginning. Uh, BL 2023-2021, Robert Sponsor approves the plans for a solid waste processing facility to be located at 7133 Centennial Boulevard with ancillary uses at 7139 Centennial Boulevard. Uh, do I have a motion? I move. Moved, properly seconded. I will turn it over to Council Member Roberts for Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I apologize for being late to your meeting. Um, right. This is what I think Council Lady uh, Allen was referring to earlier. This um, bill is in no way related to the legislation she's putting forward. This affects my district and my district only. Um, this is a business that was already operating and uh, but right after the Bordeaux uh, facility closed, 
And all this bill does is allow them to do demolition and construction materials and put it in the industrial part of my district. And the two neighborhoods that are affected by this are getting a community benefits agreement and it's a win-win for my district. So I ask that you please uh, ask this. Thank you for that explanation. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? We recommend approval. So this uh, concludes our agenda. We have two late resolutions. Oh yeah, we do. We do have two late resolutions we didn't address. Sorry about that. Yep. Uh, we have a late file resolution by Council Member Toombs approves tranche amendment two between the Tennessee Valley Authority, National Electric Service, and the uh, Metropolitan Government with the purchase of renewable energy. Uh, we do have a letter uh, asking us to approve, and we also have Council Member Toombs here. So uh, uh, can we get that before us with a motion? So moved and properly seconded. I will go to Council Member Toombs if you'd like for an explanation on. I would defer to the administration. Administration. Table. I gave, oh, the wrong one, public table. Thank you, Council Lady Toombs and Chair. Um, so the council may remember back in 2020, this council approved um, a, a utility scale solar project that was gonna go just outside of Oklahoma, about 600 acres generating a total of 200 megawatts uh, to power uh, literally one third of Metro's energy needs. Uh, that's still on track. Uh, what has happened is the site has to go undergo an extensive um, Environmental Policy Act review. It did that. It took a long time. The facility used to be used. Um, it's next to an armaments dealer, uh, armaments um, testing area. It's near the Air Force Base. Um, there were some some issues there that had to be addressed, but they've they've been addressed. Unfortunately, what has happened for anybody who's reading the papers in the last three years, there've been some uh, significant changes in the solar supply line, and as a result, TVA increased our REC prices. Um, uh, our REC ch uh, charges that uh, more than doubled from a dollar twenty-five per rec to uh, three hundred eight per rec. So uh, rather than pay an increased amount, we just l lowered the total megawattage share that we're participating in. It'll go from a hundred megawatts to forty megawatts, um, but still a vitally important uh, contribution to our um, uh, energy savings program. Uh, we're not spending any more money than uh, previously approved, and with that, would ask for your approval. Any explanation on late file nature? Yes, sir, thank you. Um, this was being prepared by one of the attorneys at Metro Legal who um, had to be out of the office unexpectedly on Friday on the filing deadline, um, intentionally filed this. We had two choices, just wait until the August 15th meeting and file it timely or try a late file so that if there were any questions or considerations or any requests for deferral, we had that built-in comfort level. Thank you. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Um, we've got one, no votes. Okay, we recommend approval. Next is another late file that, uh, resolution by Councilmember Evans approves an intergovernmental agreement between the United States Department of Transportation and NDOT for acceptance of a strengthening mobility and revolutionizing transportation grant from USDOT to NDOT to install LIDAR and video camera technologies at key intersections and mid-block segments for near-miss data collections. Uh, do I have a motion? Um, moved and properly seconded. Uh, do we need to go to administration or NDOT for an explanation on this? Uh, NDOT, would you like to tell us about this bill? Yes, thank you, Chair. So this is a SMART grant that we have been awarded. Uh, there was actually a previous resolution that came through council to support, support our application for this. So we awarded back in April of this year. Uh, the late filing is due to late information uh, from the US DOT as far as keeping us on our timeline for our contract. So we have to have a sign, we have to sign the contract with them by August 15th. Uh, so that's why we, we're doing the late the late filing uh, today for that. So this is accepting the funds. And I can go into any other detail if you'd like. Thank you for that. Any other questions relative to the bill? 
All right, I'm gonna sign on to this bill so we can move it in committee uh, without Councilmember Evans being here. It has been recommended by another committee. So uh, all in favor of this bill? Aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. I believe that brings us to the end of our agenda. I do wanna make one other comment to let out all uh, transportation committee and council members know that we have uh, uh, been talking to NES and TVA to get them here to talk about recent power outages and rolling blackouts and a number of the things that have occurred uh, throughout the city. And they both have agreed to be at the transportation committee meeting uh, at our next council meeting two weeks from now. So we will have both of them here to answer questions relative to those issues. So I just wanted to make sure everyone knows that so you can come prepared. Uh, I'll send an email I'll have to make sure that the all council knows uh, so uh, they can know what time the meeting occurs so everybody can be here and have an opportunity to quiz them. All right, any other business before the transportation committee? Seeing none, we are adjourned. Thank you all for attending.